Hello and welcome to this five minute guide on video conferencing. These days, video conferencing is a part of most online courses and a part of the essential teacher toolkit for those who make a living teaching online. But the big question for those moving into this area of teaching is, which platform should I choose and do I have to pay for it? Let's start with the basics. Anyone teaching online is going to have to be both seen and heard and be able to see and hear the people they're teaching. This means full audio and video with decent quality. As a teacher, you're probably also going to want to share some slides or electronic handouts as you teach, which means you need to be able to upload slides or share images on some kind of electronic whiteboard or screen sharing area. If you want to really use the space creatively, you might want the ability to watch videos together or to uh, create polls and small quizzes and have them answered. And perhaps the chance to hand over control to your learners and, and have them share resources or drive the session themselves. If you're teaching groups, you may want the ability to split the group up into pairs or smaller groups and give them a chance to work together in their own space. Uh, before coming back to a, a plenary session again. These spaces are sometimes known as breakout rooms in video conferencing software. You're probably also going to want recordings of your sessions. These would be the electronic equivalent of copying down board work or uh, taking notes on paper. Uh, and what about a text chat for those times when video and audio aren't working or for uh, troubleshooting technical issues. You might want people to be able to attend your sessions on mobile devices. After all, if they can do everything else on a mobile device these days, uh, why not attend your classes and courses? All of these things and more are the kind of considerations we need to take into account when choosing a video conferencing or live class platform. Over the past 14 years, Nikki and I have pretty much tried them all and uh, we've come to one basic conclusion you get what you pay for. But let's take a quick look at some of the options. If you're teaching one-to-one, -one, then Skype might be the obvious first choice. Probably installed on more computers than most other pieces of software in the world. People are familiar with it, they have their machines configured to use it, and they're probably using it on a regular basis. Um, all of this can, of course, reduce technical support time and setup time. With Skype, audio and video tend to be generally pretty good. Uh, but more advanced features are lacking and you're going to need to get some outside help to uh, say record lessons or use a whiteboard. Although note that Skype for Business does have more tools than the everyday version that, that you and I probably use. Group teaching though really needs a, a more kind of robust purpose design solution and there are a lot on the market. Uh, you might want to take a look at any of these, WizIQ, Zoom, uh, Adobe Connect or Blackboard Collaborate. There are of course others, uh, lots of others. Uh, see if you can take them for a test drive, see which one suits you. These, these platforms that we've just mentioned are more suited to education and have features to match. Uh, in all of these you'll find text chat, whiteboard, screen sharing, breakout rooms, recordings, polls and more. And these features can be combined into all sorts of useful lesson plans and tasks. We're often asked uh, at the consultancy what we use, and the answer these days is uh, Adobe Connect, for a variety of reasons. Um, Connect is robust, it's user-friendly, it doesn't require fiddling around with Java or anything else like that. Uh, most people who attend regularly attend webinars online and events online are probably going to be familiar with it. It works well on mobile devices, uh, has a good variety of tools and very flexible layouts. Um, reusable rooms with customizable web addresses. There are a lot of other reasons for Adobe Connect, but those are a, a good start. More than anything, I'd say that Connect just works, uh, and there's a lot to be said for that when it comes to live online sessions, which are often fraught with uh, technical issues and support requests. Your own choice will depend largely on how much you can afford to spend and on how many of these tools and features you need. And it's worth taking some time out to think about all this before forging ahead. If possible, have a go on a trial account before deciding. See which one suits you best. Whatever your choice, whatever your decision, 
Choosing a platform is a small but important part of getting started as an online teacher or trainer. The really hard work is still in course design, task design, and the nitty gritty of managing learning in an online environment. Uh, we'll be looking at this in a future five minute guide, so please stay tuned. Bye for now.